At some point, after washing many resin prints in your form wash L, the solvent will become saturated with resin, at which point you will need to replace the solvent. Now most users, us included, wash their resin prints in isopropyl alcohol or IPA for short. Oh, and if using the acronym IPA, always know the context. Mixing up the two is not a mistake you'll make twice. Lastly, whenever working around IPA and or uncured resin, always wear nitrile gloves and safety glasses. Now we've been using our wash L for nearly a year and have exceeded the 10% saturation limit. Beyond 10% and IPA can no longer effectively remove uncured resin from your resin prints. We reached out to Safety Clean who provided us with a 15 gallon drum since the wash L's volume is about 11 gallons. Safety Clean then comes by, picks up the drum at a cost for proper recycling and disposal. Using the included solvent pump, Pump the saturated IPA into the drum. You'll notice that our saturated IPA is very milky white. This is because we printed a bunch of rigid 10K parts and rigid 10K being a white glass filled resin leaves behind very fine particulates after washing. We've also printed parts in gravy for and durable resins. Once you've reached the dregs, it helps to lift the wash L to accumulate the saturated solvent in one corner of the wash bucket to easily suck the rest out of it. With all the solvent removed, it's a good idea to inspect your impellers and their washers for wear. Use a 2.5 millimeter hex driver to remove the impeller screws and expose the subcomponents. We'll be inspecting the impellers and the washers they ride on. The impeller washer has three lobes connected to a central hub. If any of the connection points are cracked or if the lobes are broken away, like you see here, both the impeller and the washer need to be replaced. For the impeller, if you see signs of wear or areas where the O-ring has started to fuse to the impeller, replace the impeller. If the underside of the impeller is wearing away to the point where you can see the impeller's magnets, replace the impeller. Since this was only our first solvent removal, we'll check the impellers on the next solvent replacement. We had to go in and give the bottom of the wash bucket a couple rinses with IPA due to all the semi-solidified glass particulates. This was then poured into that 15 gallon drum. You'll notice during this process that the wash bucket has been removed from the wash L. This is a necessary step and is fortunately very easy to do as the wash bucket just slides out once the wash L's front door has been opened and the solvent monitor has been removed. At this point, we went about wiping down the entire wash L with IPA and paper towels, mainly because of the residue left behind from washing all those rigid 10K prints. This process doesn't take too long, but it'll prevent any remaining particulates from settling on any future prints. Also, be sure to clean the solvent monitor. Once it is clean, reassemble the wash bucket lid back to the wash bucket and insert the solvent monitor back in place. After everything is wiped down, the wash bucket can be reassembled and inserted back into the wash L. Be sure to do this before adding solvent or it's gonna be really heavy. Tuck the solvent monitor wire out of the way as you slide that bucket back into the wash L and close everything back up. We did a final wipe down on the wash L's upper surfaces since resin can pool here. And once all that was completed, you are now ready to add fresh solvent. There are a couple ways to add in solvent. I opted for simply removing the wash basket and holding one of the door flaps ajar. You can see that we already have about two gallons in the bottom that was briefly added for a quick wash on a part that was needed for a trade show. The other method for easy addition of solvent is to submerge the carriage and wash basket assembly using the lower button on the screen. This will keep the doors open and is probably the easier method. 
Since the wash L has a maximum capacity of about 11 gallons, you should aim to purchase 12 gallons of solvent. It helps to have a little extra for the squirt bottle. Now it's just a matter of pouring it all in. For IPA users, it is recommended to use IPA at a concentration of 90% or higher. We buy this Florida Laboratories IPA at 99% concentration from Amazon. It's very cost-effective stuff. Once you get close to the top, keep an eye on the min and max markers printed on the back of the wash bucket. Note that if you opt for lowering the wash basket when adding solvent, these markers are also present on the wash basket's carriage. Add the remaining solvent until you are between these two markers. Then return the wash basket and you are now good to go. At this point, there are just a couple of finishing steps. One of these finishing steps is ensuring the screen displays the proper solvent and solvent saturation percentage of zero. If you don't see the solvent monitor update with this information, you need to lower the wash basket by pressing lower on the UI. Since we did a reset on our wash L to reconnect the wash L to a new internet connection, we had to reselect the solvent type. We did this by returning to the onboarding utility and going through those steps again until we achieved the screen that said IPA or TPM. Obviously, we selected IPA. Returning to the home screen, you can now see that we are all set. It's pretty great to see that saturation percentage return to zero so we can start washing our prints again.